Good evening, everyone, and uh, thank you all for joining the Palm Springs International Airport Commissioner's Meeting Tuesday, November 22nd at 5.30 p.m. Uh, I'm calling this meeting to order, and at this time, requesting Commissioner Adams to lead us to the Pledge of Allegiance, please. Uh, Chairman Dada, Commissioner Adams is not in the meeting just yet. Then I would like Commissioner Feltman. Okay, thank you. I pledge allegiance, allegiance to, the flag to the flag of the, of the United, United States, States, of States of America and to the Republic, to the Republic for which it stands, for which it stands. Nation, nation, under God, indivisible, indivisible liberty, and liberty and justice, and justice for, for all. Thank you, Commissioner Feltman. Christina has the agenda was posted and the date. <coughs> it was posted on the onset, or excuse me, November 17th. Thank you so much. Can you do the roll call, please? Commissioners, please unmute your mics at this time. Commissioners Adams. Breslin. Present. Badillo. Present. Burke. Present. Corcoran. Present. Dada. Present. Feltman. Here. Hedrick. Present. Hughes is excused. Martin. Present. Miller is excused. Payne. Present. Pai. Here. Schmitz is excused. Slama. Slama. Suero. Here. Wheel is excused. And Wiseman. Present. Thank you. We have a quorum. Thank you, Christina. And at this time, I will entertain a motion for the acceptance of the agenda. So moved. Second. So we have a motion and a second. Any changes? Seeing none, all in favor. Aye. Any opposed? All right. At this time, we will open up for public comments. And the public comments are limited to three minutes on any subject within the preview of the commission. Christina, do we have anyone that would like to speak? We have no one scheduled for public comments this evening, but we'll give it a moment to see if anyone would like to raise their hand to speak at this time. Seeing none, I would like to close the public comments and will entertain a motion for the approval of the minutes for the commission's September 27th meeting. Question on the minutes? Yes, please. Um, this is on page 11, and I just want to clarify um, Harry's statement to my question. Harry, on page 11, we were talking about a landlord versus an operator model, and you're in the minutes quoted as saying that you want to go with a landlord model, and I'm thinking you might it, you might have meant to say operator model. So I'm just trying to clarify in answer to my question, is it landlord or operator from a model standpoint? So I believe my response in the minutes or in that session uh, was that we wanted to maintain a landlord relationship. Now I can expand on that a little bit um, and that's a discussion perhaps for another day, um, but if we look at it through another lens, then yes, we would want to operate as an airport operator as a whole. Yeah, that's right. So I, I think we can leave it. Um, Christina, uh, again, I don't know the protocol, but what Harry just said, I think is, is correct. And if it's possible to amend the minutes to have Harry speak to the operator airport as an operator model, I think that would 
that would be accurate and accurately reflect the position of the airport. Okay, I'll review the minutes with Harry and, and we'll uh, adjust accordingly. Thank you. You're That's welcome. it. Thank you, Commissioner Payne, and thank you, Christina. And at this time, I will entertain a motion for the approval of the minutes. So move with appropriate adjustments. Thank you, Commissioner Hendricks. I'll need a second. Second. Second by David Feldman. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Seeing none at this time, and again, I've been told this is the first time this commission is going into a closed session. So having being in the closed session, Christina, at this time, as required, we will do another roll call. So roll call, please. Actually, that's a roll call once we get into closed session, Chairman Dada. We'll take the roll call once we're in closed session. Okay. So we are going into closed session. Yes. So you'll be exiting this meeting. You'll leave this Zoom link and you'll enter into the closed session Zoom link. Is there a separate Zoom link for closed session? Yes. I When I emailed the agenda, I sent the instructions with the second Zoom link. Do you need me to forward that to you, Chairman Dada? Please, if you can send it to me on uh, both my email addresses, please. Yes, sir. Will do. And, and I'll just chime in to say before you leave, there's a, a, a little bit of a, a script that we have to go through before we reconvene in closed session. And uh, I should probably introduce myself. I'm Jeremy Holm. I'm an associate with Best Best and Krieger, and I'm covering for uh, Jeff Ballinger today. Thank you. So uh, the airport commission will be going into closed session to discuss the following item, item 7A, conference with real property negotiators uh, concerning Palm Springs International Airport concession spaces. Um, representing the uh, agency here is uh, Harry Barrett Jr., executive director of aviation, Teresa Gallivan, the interim city manager, and uh, replacing Jeff Ballinger as legal counsel will be me, Jeremy Holmes, just want the record to reflect that. Um, the negotiating parties are the Marshall Group LLC, the Hudson Group Retail LLC, Parodies, uh, Lagardere PSP LLC, SSP America Inc., and what's under negotiation are the price and terms of payment of these uh, concession space leases. Members of the public are welcome to continue to stay on the line while the airport commission is in closed session. However, they will only hear silence. Following closed session, an oral announcement of any reportable action uh, taken by the airport commission in closed session will be made, if any. Uh, the oral announcement of any reportable action will be heard on the teleconference line. At this time, are there any members of the airport commission that wish to slash need to recuse themselves from participating or considering item 7A? Well, I do have a conflict, however, uh, I will recuse myself in making the decision. Okay. And then we'll just mark the record to reflect to reflect that uh, Chairman Dada will refuse in participating with, in the decision. And again, for all the commissioners that there is a local vendor name, Heyday Burgers, that one of the uh, folks that are bidding on this uh, have an option that they could go ahead and retain them in providing their services at the airport if they are selected. Excellent. And uh, before we adjourn to closed uh, session, Christina, were there any public comments submitted for this closed session item? No, there were no public comments submitted for the closed session section of the meeting. And uh, are there any members of the public attending uh, via Zoom who would like to be heard before we go into closed session? And there's no one wishing to speak at this time. If there are no further comments, uh, we will now adjourn and turn to closed session uh, via that uh, Zoom link that was sent to everyone. I re-emailed it to all the commissioners in case you need it. Thank you so much, Christina. I'll You're welcome. Be... All right, now we can begin. Jeremy? 
There are two reportable actions taken in closed session regarding item 7A, Conference of Real Property Negotiators. First, the Airport Commission voted 9 to 0 with two abstentions in favor of recommending to the City Council approval of a concession agreement for retail to the company that is recommended by staff. Second, the Airport Commission also voted 10 to 1 with one abstention in favor of recommending to the City Council the approval of the concession agreement for food and beverage to the company recommended by staff with further direction regarding food and beverage options, location design, and design evaluation options. The terms of these concession agreements will be presented to the City Council in closed session at the City Council meeting on December 5th. The term shall be available to the public following that item if the City Council votes to approve of those concession agreements. That ends the closed session report, and I turn the meeting back over to Chairman Donna. Thank you so much. Much appreciate that. Uh, carry discussion and action item 9A, B, and C. Thank you, Chairman Dada. Uh, Daniel is not here to present his uh, report. However, he did provide that previously uh, by way of documents. So that's file and receipt for the commission. I believe the next report is financial summary update for Victoria. Uh, good evening. I have provided the financials for um, October 31st, 2022. It is in the agenda packet. I am available for questions. All right, thank you, Victoria. Thank you, Victoria. Seeing none, we move on to projects and airport capital improvement program, Harry. Uh, just a couple of day, updates on uh, 9C. So the first is, I do apologize, I don't have current noise complaint numbers for the group today. I will be providing those at the next commission meeting. In terms of public parking, um, we are starting to see that our primary lots are getting uh, full or have been full. We actually closed uh, the entrances to those today. Um, with a count, our car count of about 40 cars in our overflow lot. I do expect that to grow substantially tomorrow, uh, pre-Thanksgiving. Uh, um, so uh, just warn your friends, there will be limited parking going into the holidays. <clears throat> uh, for the commission, uh, there will be a new assistant airport director starting December 5th. His name is Jeremy, Jeremy Keating. Um, he is coming from Laughlin Bullhead, Nevada. Uh, we did two recruitments um, to, to get to this point, and I'm glad to have him on board because I've been doing this job for a year and my hair is grayed substantially uh, without backup. Um, in terms of other staffing, we are uh, recruiting uh, for two new maintenance supervisors, a maintenance superintendent, uh, safety management systems manager, um, a community and legislative specialist, and a marketing com and communication specialist. So our HR team is working on those now. And then in terms of projects, uh, within the last month, we uh, recently started three FAA-funded projects. One would be the design of Taxiway Whiskey, which is our primary taxiway leading into the commercial terminal, into the commercial ramps. Um, we also started a wildlife hazard assessment and wildlife hazard management plan study. Uh, that'll go on for about a year. Um, and then a airfield hotspot study. And what I mean by hotspot is we're looking at the safety geometry of the airfield. Um, and for those areas that we have already identified as unsafe, we're working to mitigate those. So we started those three things over the last few weeks. Uh, and then finally, uh, coming soon within the next three weeks or so, um, the airport will be posting uh, an RFP for feasibility study for uh, expansion of FIS um, to include additional international services, uh, international uh, flights to the airport. Um, that RFP right now is scoped for two phases. So the first part of that would be a benchmark study to determine what other airports uh, similar to PSP have done uh, to bring in international service and expand customs facilities. Uh, the second phase of that would be a business case to justify expansion of international service uh, and customs facilities here at Palm Springs. The goal is to get that on the street near the end of the month next month. 
um, with consultant selection in January, and then that process would uh, continue on for about a year. And that is all I have to report. Any question for our airport director? Are these general questions off top uh, on any topic? On the project, the capital project. Okay. No questions. All right. Seeing none, any commissioner requests and reports? That's where Commissioner Payne, you can have a question. Just two status updates, if you would, Harry. Um, where are we with baggage and the attorney and the consultants? That'd be the first question. Sorry, just trying to find my mute button there. Um, so uh, in terms of um, the baggage handling system right now, uh, it is, uh, there's been a lot of work done on that system in terms of software improvements um, and in terms of just modification. Uh, right now we are seeing uh, efficiency gain actually of about 35 to 40%. Um, so we're processing 35 to 40% more bags than we were over the spring. Um, a lot of that really has to do with uh, the manpower um, that we uh, incorporate into that process. Uh, however, we haven't seen any substantial backups uh, in the process. So in terms of the short term, um, no issues there right now. We'll have to see what that looks like over the holiday and going into <clears throat> January, February, March, and April. Uh, in terms of the long term, uh, I think Jeremy could probably speak better to this if he is still on. I thought I saw him just a second ago, um, but we um, I've, I've pretty much turned that over to the city attorney's office. They are still vetting, you know, what's what was done uh, in terms of the design, who has culpability, if there is any culpability uh, related to that. There have been no major decisions made yet. Uh, no recommendations made to the airport or to the city. So before Jeremy jumps in, um, if I do my sums, you th do, it would be fair to say that of the the design goal originally, are we at seventy percent of that design goal? Sixty percent? Where do you what do you think? Um, if I had to attach a number to it, I would probably say we're at sixty percent of the design goal. The baggage handling system was never designed to have uh, manpower feed, <laughs> feed yeah. the system. So that's yeah. that's still an issue for us. Got it. Welcome Jeremy's comments. Uh, I don't really have that much more to add uh, than Harry does. Uh, we haven't made any final decisions on on this, but we'll be back with an update when, when we have. <laughs> well, okay, I'm gonna ask I'm you. Gonna ask I, it, we, it's always been manana, Jeremy. Yeah. So are we talking next month? Commission meeting. When when do we have clarity on and move uh, go forward? Uh, what what day is the commission meeting for next month? <laughs> the next meeting is December twenty first. December twenty first. Uh, I'll reach out to Jeff Ballinger to see if, if we have any movement. We'll, we'll give you an update and at the next meeting. That'd be great. And if yeah. we need to do closed session, we now know how to do a closed session. So. <laughs> very good. Uh, and then Harry, just two more very quickly. Um, I think. Tell me if this is the right term to use the MII agreement with the airlines. You alluded to it in the concession presentation. Um, where are we with that one? Is that um, almost there, months away? What's your sense now? Are you referring to the EULA, the airport use and lease agreement? Yes. So we uh, we believe that we are fairly close on that agreement with. Uh, with the airlines, um, actually really, really close uh, on that agreement. So I would expect uh, if we continue with the work that we're doing, uh, that we should have draft documents out to the airlines in, in January and an executable document um, ready to go for March. When, when would you come back to the commission saying, okay, it's going to do this and we get this out of it? When would you be able to present to the commission? Once we had commitment, uh, firm commitment from the airlines, I would be able to present that information. So are we talking February, March? What do you think? Uh, that just depends on the negotiation and how that goes. I, I can't. Okay. And then, uh, okay. All right. Thank you. Can I pick up on John Payne's question, please? please. 
uh, on the luggage, on the baggage. Um, if you've been able to pick up 35 to 40 percent, um, is there somebody with a pen and paper or an abacus or something who can figure out whether we can reduce the number of hours? I saw a post the other day of two and a half hours that we're asking people to come in advance of flights. I mean, two hours would sort of still be kind of on, on the longest side of any airport in the United States that I've seen for a domestic flight. So at some point, are we gonna be able to give people sort of better timing than two and a half hours? I would be hesitant to reduce that for two reasons. So the first is we have not fully realized what the system can do with the mitigations that we have in place. And we probably would not know that information until I would say late January. Um, so there, there is the potential that as we continue to grow or as we continue to see additional passenger growth, we're gonna struggle with the mitigations we have in place. Now, our hope is that we don't, we're pretty confident that we wouldn't given what we've seen with those things that we've implemented. Uh, but I would be hesitant to tell somebody, hey, come to the airport an hour early and then their bag is missed. The other issue that we're now facing, um, and this was just a discussion that, you know, Teresa and I had with the TSA Federal Security Director today, um, is that based on our projections going into the spring, checkpoint times are going to be an issue now. Um, the physical capacity of the facility will not be able to accommodate um the number of passengers that we are currently seeing booked to, to take flights out um so what we two-year-old man accused in the shooting is facing <laughs> oh, somebody's I'm not on mute okay so what we would be concerned with is now not the baggage being an issue but the actual physical screening of the passengers being an issue so i would be hesitant to to, to go out with a revised time Again, probably something for a longer conversation outside of this meeting, but there are opportunities, Harry, that for events like Coachella and Stagecoach, we can pre-clear and get people post-security, but it's a much longer conversation. Some people are doing that now for just those reasons. Yeah, yeah, we actually had, I mean, not to go off topic here, but we had those discussions with the federal security director today. Super, super. Thank you. Terry, the, the improvements that you just mentioned to us, is that based on additional manpower that you are providing or the system changing the software and on and on? Uh, it's both. So we saw some efficiency gain in terms of the speed of the system and the merge logic, uh, but we also saw that include in, introducing manpower to the process really sped up some of the baggage screening effort. Okay, any other questions? Seeing none, we move on to item number 11. Do you have anything on that, Harry? I do not believe I do, Chairman Dotto. Okay, how about item number 12, receive and file? I believe we all have that in our package. And I believe Daniel is not here to share with us. Can we move on to item 13, committees and future committee meetings? Maybe we can discuss that at our next meeting. So at this time, oh. I will go ahead. Oh, Aftab, I was wondering, when are we going to plan on starting to meet in person again? Well, definitely Harry and his team have committed to do hybrid meetings starting the first of New Year, first meeting the New Year. So will we have the, uh, the requirement to have mandatory in-person meetings again, or it'll continue with the choice of being either in-person or uh, on Zoom? Well, I would personally, I would prefer to be in person, but again, I'm only one. So it's up to the commission to make a decision. I'll make it two people, you and I so far. It sounds like an agenda item for January. 
well, we, maybe we can make this as an agenda item for our December meeting. Christina, can we put that down as, as an agenda item to discuss? Uh, sure. My understanding was um, that City Attorney Jeff Ballinger said that we'd be receiving more information in January on what the regulations were going to be. Um, so we might be getting ahead here. And as far as going to the hybrid meeting, that is contingent on us making sure that we have the proper uh, IT or sound equipment in our conference room, which, which IT is working on making sure we have that. So um, we're trying to get it ready for the hybrid meetings as quickly as possible. And I'll, I'll keep you uh, and Vice Chairman Corcoran updated on that as we go. Yeah, if there are any changes from now, before we put out the agenda for the December meeting, we can all get, always include it. Absolutely. And then the other question I have is we had moved our meetings to evenings in order to be able to get more public participation, which we do not have. Uh, and so th there was a discussion in one of the previous meetings about possibly moving the commission meetings back uh, to mornings or during the day, not evenings. So is that still under consideration? Yes, Christina, if you can also check with uh, our attorney, Ballinger, if that is when, possible. When City Attorney uh, Ballinger was on our September 21st meeting, he said that that was a directive from the City Council. So we need to, um, we, my understanding was it was not an option to move to morning meetings, but that may be something that could be reconsidered with the new council. Thank you. All right, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn this meeting and we are going to meet uh, Zoom 5.30 p.m. 21st December. So moved. Second. Thank you all. Thanks, staff, for a great job today.